This past Thursday, I received a good number of very awkward text messages summarizing it basically went, happy birthday, hope it's the ha ha happiest birthday, many blessings. But on another note, I'm sorry about your bishop. I wanted to offer some words today about Bishop McFadden. And I was kind of torn, so it's like, you know, throughout, throughout this Easter season, I've been giving sort of more children's homilies in that respect. But then it clicked, it's like, one of the Bishop McFadden's uh, most beloved activities is confirmation. He actually, he loved the young people that I see so much. Um, so I figured, all right, well, I'll just blend the two. So uh, if, uh, if there's any kids that want to come up here, you want to welcome them. Come up today. Any kids. All right, wow. All right, I need at least one. I need at least one great soul. All right, Owen, thank you. All of you have more teammates. You got, you got buddies coming. Now, if you were just a brave one, and they're all like, all right, I'll follow that. You guys can sit down out here, it's cool. It's a great picture of me, don't you think? Don't I look real good in that picture? This is a picture from my ordination two years ago. I was the very first priest, the very first diocesan priest ordained by Bishop McFadden. It's my claim to fame. I'm pretty awesome. He was pretty cool too. Um, one of my favorite stories about Bishop McFadden, he would have the priest over at his house for a picnic every summer. And he loved this one long game that was called cornhole. It was like a beanbag toss game into a, the other thing. But I was, I was playing it with him once. I was, I was whooping him up real bad. This was right after I got ordained. I learned this at the seminary. It's a Midwestern thing. But I, was, I was tearing it up. And I was about to win until one of my brother priests came over, whispered in my ear, like, do you really want to beat the bishop this badly? <laughs> He's going to be your boss, you know? So, and it was amazing when, I, when he slowly started catching up. But just his demeanor, it, it was so much more happy. It was, it was great. I loved it. But he was a, he was a competitor. He, he was a very intense man. But not just at Cornhole, he was very intense when it came to, to, to holiness and everything too. So I want to share with you a little bit about Bishop McFadden. I'm going to use the, sort of the, what we call the symbols of his office as bishop. So I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. All right, well you were the first one up here, Stephen. Oh, and Oh, and have you ever had any dreams of being bishop? Yeah, all right, good. Well, this is a big day. This is a great day. All right. Stay right there, Owen. Don't move. All right, so the first thing the bishop would put on every morning would be his tactic. This is going to be the hardest thing you're going to do all day is button this thing up. And this is the smallest one we have. Almost fits. We'll grow into it. Alright, start buttoning away. Does anybody know what the color black symbolizes? Death. Very good. So, us priests, the bishop, the bishop had a cool one. He had like purple piping. I think, yeah, you can see it over there. He's got that purple typing when it's called in purple buttons. But we would wear these tassels. This is a, a symbol of death, this black death. The white was always a sign of the resurrection. The light always shines in the darkness. But it was a sign that, you know, we don't, we don't live, a, we don't have a worldly job. We don't have a worldly family. That everything we do is devoted to, to God and to his church. So you put that on and you're reminded, you know, it's, uh, my job is to get to heaven and to bring as many people with me as possible. How are you doing there, buddy? Good, all right. I don't know if you guys heard the story of the last hour or so of Bishop McFadden's life. He was in the, the car being driven to the hospital by Monsignor Garber, a good friend of his. And I guess he, he thought he was getting worse and he, and he told it, Monsignor Garber, he's like, Joe, pull, pull over, I, I want to receive absolution. And Monsignor Garber relates that the, uh, later on that you know, he was so focused on getting him to the hospital, whereas Bishop McFadden was so interested in just getting him to heaven. He was so focused on that. And I don't know, you, you know, he had such a love for confession. 
know he made us preach about that every Sunday of Lent last year. Um, every time the priest got together, he would always have penance services for us. He, he told us again and again, you know, fall in love with the sacrament of confession. It was one of his great privileges. He realized that you know, the forgiveness of Christ is so close, we but have to reach out and take it. It is so close to us. Good, looking good, looking good. All right, so the next thing the bishop always wears A ring. It's a cool ring. It's my rosary ring. Does anybody know what is probably the most special ring most people wear? Oh, this is a rosary ring. But what is what is the most special ring most people wear? A wedding ring. Very good. All right. Do you know where this goes? All right. Do you know what the ring finger is? That one right there. Awesome. The wedding ring. And so the the bishop wears a ring. Because he's, he's what we call wedded to this church, this local church in Harris. Because this is Jesus, uh, his bride was the whole church. And that's who he loved and who he gave his life for. The bishop is called to love and to give his life for a local church. This church here in Harrisburg. This diocese of Harrisburg. And he, this is kind of after love this place. I don't know if you know it or not, but the diocese of Harrisburg is a very special diocese. We have a very special um, fraternity amongst the priests and the spirit, unlike most places, and the people of God here are just awesome, uh, more so than, than in many other places. So he was, and he was, it was so awesome to me because I, I got to see him for about two and a half, all two and a half years, and his heart was just falling deeper and deeper in love with, with you, with the people here. Um, the, before he went to bed, the night before, on Wednesday night, uh, he was talking to a Monsignor Garvin again, and he's quoted as saying, uh, I love the people and the priests that I said, Harris, but God has been so very good to me in placing me there. Um, so know that he had you in his heart so much, and we pray if you love much here, think of how much more he loves you up there. What's next? Oh, that's next. Does anybody know what this is called? Do you really know what this is called? It begins with an M. I would be so impressed. I don't even think Mr. T knows what this is called. Does he? What is it called? Oh my, oh, he knew it. All right, I'll give you bonus points. All right, make sure that fits you. So this is a mitre. simply means headband. I don't know if you ever saw somebody go out running, but where they wear that sweatband, and sometimes there's those little tassels that dangle behind them, so that's what those are for. And so it's a reminder, St. Paul, if you ever read his letters, he was intense, and he often used these analogies, running analogies. He says a lot of people enter races, and they run. But when you run, you have to run so as to win. Don't just run to finish, but run so as to win. Fight the good fight, keep the faith, he would always say. And so this is a reminder both of the, the sweat band that we're called to run, but then the crown that the victor also receives. So the bishop always had to remind, remember that he has to fight the good fight. He has to run so as to win, not just run to finish. And now this bishop, he was so competitive. I know he, he, he probably lived on that, that desire all the time. But his, his greatest desire in life was to be a holy bishop. That's what he wanted more than anything else. That's what he asked people to pray for constantly. Pray that I'd be a holy bishop. That's what he wanted, number one. And number two is he wanted a holy people. He wanted a holy people. So I promise you this, if he was able to ask Jesus one thing when he got to heaven, it was probably to help you grow in holiness. If you could ask him for one thing, he would probably pray for your sanctification. He just desired holiness that much. That was his intensity. What's next? Oh, that's right. Who knows what this is? It's a king of big king. Do you know what it's called? A staff. Do you know what, anybody know what the fancy name for it is? It's Mr. T now. Not this one I. It's called a crozier. It's a big fancy name. Does anybody know what it represents? This is the easy one. 
The shepherd, very good, the good shepherd. And you know what you can do with these things? You can do two things. You see. You can fight off wolves. Or you can pull back the sheep. Alright, see? That sheep doesn't like it. But you can fight off the wolves and pull back the sheep. Of all my sort of conversations I had with him and prior to the masses I've, I've had with the fisherman fan, the thing that he most wanted to draw people in with, the thing that he wanted his, his sheep, his, his flock to know, there was one thing, it would have been the Eucharist. That was his love above all things. And he, he desired so much that everyone have this incredible encounter with the Eucharist. That Jesus Christ truly present to us. Jesus Christ, God himself, giving himself to us. And that, was his, that was his love. He said no one would ever leave the church if they knew and they believed that Jesus Christ is truly present right there. He spent an hour on his knees every day before the Blessed Sacrament praying for, praying for us. So I think if there was ever, if there was one thing you wanted to do to honor Bishop Ephraim, if there was one thing you wanted to do, it would be it would have to involve the Eucharist. Do something. Pray, pray in front of the Eucharist for an hour to, to read a book on the spirituality of the Eucharist or, you know, do our, we're going to have a Eucharistic procession on Corpus Christi. Um, if you want to do something in honor and thanksgiving to Bishop McFadden, connect it to the Eucharist. That would give him praise and thanks more than anything else. And last, but not least. So what does he have over there that Owen is missing? Bishop Owen is missing. A cross, very good. What we call the pectoral cross. Let me see if I can get this over the miter. That's the bishop's cross. And in the old days, they used to have a piece, the, the cross that Jesus was crucified on. They had little pieces of it, and they would actually put little pieces of those in the bishop's cross. So the bishop was always carrying around a piece of the cross that Jesus was crucified on. And it was a constant reminder to the bishop that he had a conformist life more and more to, to Christ crucified. That he had to love his people to that extent. That it was, it was always around his neck, always that reminder. And so that's, that's not our prayer today, that, that, Jesus, that him who was united with Christ in the death like his might also be risen with him in a resurrection like his. And that's our prayer for, for Bishop McFadden at this time. And so yeah, I think... You know, we, we, we love his example, his example of, of confession, of the Eucharist, of, of his desire for holiness. Hopefully that inspires us to want to renew ourselves, to, to fall deep in love with Christ in the Eucharist, um, to, to unite ourselves ever more closely with him there. And last but not least, Bishop McFadden always prayed the rosary. Constantly prayed the rosary. When I was in uh, World Youth Day with him, every time it was downtime, he had that rosary out. Probably praying for all you guys. So I figured, how about we pray a Hail Mary together now? We'll pray for the repose of his soul. We'll pray Hail Mary together. So how about we kneel down and we'll pray Hail Mary for, for Bishop McFad. We'll pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let your perpetual light shine upon him. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.